Welcome back to MVM. Today we're going to take a look at the game Sky Tier Horde from Sky Tier Games. Now, you might remember the game Sky Tier, which is a kind of 1v1 skirmish game using cards. This is not a sequel or expansion to that game. This is actually a tower defense game designed for one to two players that takes place in the same world as Sky Tier and uses some of those same concepts and card ideas that you might be familiar with from that original game. Now, I do see that this is a one or two player game. You can play this game solo or you can play with a friend where you are trying to cooperatively hold off the minions and uh, hordes as they come at your castle. There's also potentially other gameplay modes that might be revealed during the Kickstarter campaign. I know there's been some hinted, like a one versus many three player mode where one player gets to control the horde while two players defend. So take a look at their Kickstarter page to see all the different evolving game modes. But today, I'm really gonna be talking about that solo or two player mode. And I've actually kind of set up a solo game in front of me, so let's take a look. Now, I do have this playmat already set up here. This playmat was given to me for this preview. Of course, this is just a prototype of what it's going to look like. And it's gonna tell you where to kind of put everything in the game. I've been told that this might actually be a play mat or there might be like a full mat version of this instead of what I have here which is just kind of an unfolding board. Now like I said along the sides of each it's going to tell you where to put the different aspects of the game that matter but right in the center I've got the three different decks. Now my version of this game came with three. There might be more decks that come with the Kickstarter campaign but these are the decks that you're going to play to kind of try to withstand that horde. And each player is going to choose one of these 60 card decks. Now they're kind of arranged, uh, beginner, medium, and intermediate, a little more difficult. So uh, there's a little bit of complexity to some of these. I'm gonna choose the green deck for my particular uh, explanation here. So whatever deck you're gonna choose, you just give it a little shuffle and you put it over here where your alliance deck goes. The other decks, you can simply set up to the side. You won't be using them during this particular game. Now, there will be customization options. You don't need to just use the one deck that you're given here. These are kind of just pre-made decks. So with that deck customization, you'll be able to bring your own custom deck into the battle. So you'll have to wait and see what that looks like. I don't have the deck customization rules here in front of me, but I am playing with one of those pre-made decks. You're also going to choose one of the castles to defend. Again, some of these castles are easier to defend than others based on their abilities. I'm going to choose this blue one here, the Gaping Maw, and it's going to go over here where it says castle. So I have my alliance deck and the castle I'm defending. And again, these other castles you'll place to the side. If you're playing with two players, you're both defending the same castle. Now over on this side, you're going to have the uh, stages or the horde gates. There are going to be three of them for your different difficulty level. And you'll notice here, I'm playing a single player, one player and I'm playing on normal difficulty. I don't want anything too hard for this. Each one of those difficulties comes with three stages and you'll set them aside with stage one, stage two, stage three. As you flip over one of these cards, it's going to basically show you the number of horde cards that are going to come for each wave. These gate cards do a few other things that I'll talk about. And they also populate your minions. You'll see here that you have a number of minions at the top of the, of the map here, blue, yellow, green, and red. These minions are deadly. They're going to build up and accrue over time and they're going to deal damage to you. Damage to a player is in the form of this deck. If your deck runs out, the game is over. So that'll make sense in a second. But it's gonna tell you to put little tokens on each one of these cards. And these tokens will build up over time and can potentially be doing a lot of damage to you if they're not dealt with. Above that, you're going to have your horde deck. Now, just like with the alliance decks, there are a number of different horde decks you can choose from. I'm using the undead. You can see that little uh, skeleton symbol up in the top. You're going to have a few basic horde cards that are always in play, and then you're gonna mix them with your special um, subclass. Like I said, undead here. Shuffle those together, and that makes up your horde deck. You're also gonna set aside your outsider. Your outsider is kind of your boss and your uh, horde faction is going to determine what your outsider is. So I'm using the undead outsider here. He's going to go face down in this outsider pile. It's possible that other outsider cards might be added to this pile over time, but this is ultimately going to be the end of the game. You're going to have to fight 
that outsider once you get through all three of these gate cards. So at the top here, I also have a set of skeleton tokens. These are with the undead deck, so I might be actually using those skeleton tokens as we play. Now you'll see that the board here is just divided up into six slots, one through six. These are the different rows that can be attacked. You can almost think of it as a MOBA, but it really isn't. You just have these rows. Each of the enemies are going to clash with the allies in that same row. So you can play cards to your back row to try to defend against the encroaching hordes. You're going to do that through playing cards. At the start of the game, you're going to draw five cards to make up your hand, mulliganing if you so wish. These cards are what you're going to play as defense. Each card has a mana cost, it has some attack, some defense, maybe some effects. If it's not an ally or a tower which can be built to defend, a lot of these are just spells that are kind of one-time use effects. If you've played CCGs before, you'll kind of grasp this. If you've played the original version of Sky Tier, a lot of this will be kind of familiar to you or you'll already be able to understand how this game is played, but you're basically spending mana tokens to play these cards out in front of you. And you're going to be getting mana based on the wave you're at. So stage one here for this particular gate is going to give me four mana every turn. So you would collect four mana tokens off to the side here and to show what you can spend and what you can play during your turn. So I could play four mana worth of cards. It's important to note that mana doesn't go away like in some games. You can just keep accumulating it and that's how you'll play some of these bigger cards like this behemoth that costs 12. Now whenever you play one of these cards or pay for these cards you're placing it in one of these specific slots and you have like I said your allies and your towers. Allies can engage and fight the minions. Towers are just kind of there to hold off against the hordes. So these are the different kind of card types that you're going to see, and you're going to see spells, like I said, that just have a one-time effect. Now at the start of every turn, you're going to draw some horde cards from the horde deck, and they're going to basically be your first wave. And you're gonna use the stage card, it's gonna tell you in the corner how many cards to draw. First stage of the first wave, it's fine, it's just one. So you're gonna take one card, and you're gonna place it in the leftmost available slot, and you're gonna see what kind of monster you're fighting right now. If left unchecked, this monster is going to do some damage directly to your castle. However, these monsters can be defeated before they would do damage. You can fight them with your own allies. You'll see I have nothing to start the game with. I'm going to have to play those from my hand to try to defeat these enemies. These monsters might have various effects. They might have effects when they come into play. They might have effects when they fight, when they're defeated, things like that. So it's important to read every card as it comes out to see what you're dealing with. Now, when you're playing cards out to the battlefield, say I'm playing allies or towers, you can play them adjacent to one of those monsters, meaning you're going to be fighting against that monster, or you can place them in an empty space. Potentially, I could place, for example, an ally here. If I could afford one and an ally here, you can put out towers over time. Now, if you are not currently engaging one of these monsters, you can choose to engage one of these minions instead. You'll see here that this sacrificer has an open slot across from him. I could choose any one of these minions and bring it down to engage it. This will have some important effects here in a minute, but you're going to note that that's the only way to get these tokens off is to engage them. Towers don't fight minions. Minions just will show up to fight your allies. Now, this is all happening during your phase, and you can swap these people along, uh, around as you like. You can move them to different spaces if you like. Kind of whatever you want to do on your turn to manipulate these, as long as you have enough mana to spend. You might want to consider keeping some of this mana available for spells if you have some in your hand. Now, this is just an example. I couldn't you know, normally play all of this in one turn, but I want to kind of give you an idea of how the game is played. Now, once you're done with your turn, you've passed, you've done everything you want to do, you're going to go into what's called the treachery phase, where you're going to reveal a card from the top of the deck, and it's going to do some kind of effect. You'll see that it has a treachery effect listed on the bottom. These treachery effects don't matter for cards that are in play. They're going to trigger if you happen to draw one. For example, this says a player discards a card from their hand. That's not great. You'll just take one of the cards left in your hand and you will discard it out of the game. It's important to note that you will not draw cards every turn. The only way to draw more cards is to defeat enemies. So that's something you really want to do during the fight phase, which is next. It's a simple fight phase. Everything does damage to the thing across from it equal to its own values. So my tribe warriors will do three damage to the shade hounds. The shade hounds will do four damage back. However, the Shade Hounds specifically have an ability that says they'll move to the rightmost lane, the rightmost lane when they start a fight. So they're 
slippery they move around. But if I was fighting anybody else for these minions, for example, we would just be doing our damage back and forth to each other. Whenever a minion is defeated, you'll take its tokens off. And whenever one of your characters takes damage, you'll indicate that by putting a little damage token on that card. Now, if there was nothing blocking my allies, they would do their damage directly to the gate. And I would put, for example, four damage directly on that gate card. And, you know, exactly like that, if I'm not blocking one of the monsters, it's going to do its damage. For example, four damage right here to my tower. Now, this is kind of a balance because there are two things happening here. If the tower is ever destroyed, meaning in this case it's taken 20 full damage, it's game over. We all lose. The tower's gone. If I destroy the gate card, in this case it needs six damage, so I'm almost there. If I was to have done six damage to it, you simply move to the next gate card. So that first gate card is gone, and you'll reveal another gate card, which has another potential effect. Now the whole point of the game is to destroy those gates as fast as possible while also protecting your castle. And you're going to do that not just by fighting, but also using the abilities of some of your cards. You can exhaust some of the cards that have effects or abilities. You can cast spells from your hand that might have abilities that manipulate the battlefield, healing your characters, buffing your characters. Each deck kind of has its own kind of theme and synergy, a way that it operates. Uh, the green deck here has a lot of different buffs where you can strengthen your your troops by giving them extra health extra attack damage and things like that but assuming that the game is continuing if the game didn't end meaning you didn't defeat the outsider or your castle wasn't defeated you'll move on to the pillage phase this is why i said it's important to defeat these minions for every minion token that's left in that minion row you're just going to take one of your cards and place it in the pillage pile i've got two minions left i have to get rid of two of those cards so what that means is that I'm now lower on health. If this deck is ever empty, then I lose the game. And I also would have drawn potentially two cards for the two minions I defeated. So you'll see I've just now four cards down out of my 60 card deck. So this is kind of like a timer to the game. You need to work quickly. You can't just stall out trying to build for the perfect turn because if this deck gets too low, you lose. Now the game is going to continue like this from round to round, except it's going to get a little more difficult. After the horde phase, after you summon the hordes, you'll actually rotate this horde card and you'll notice that there's a new card in the top corner now. This turn, I'd be putting out two horde cards instead of just one. And these horde cards could be uh, also spells and actions and things like that, um, but generally they're going to be monsters that come into play and you know mess with your strategy a little bit and again you're looking at the different play effects and the different bonuses that these things might have however if you manage to fight your way through all three gates that's when you finally get to summon that outsider and you'll take that outsider and you'll place them out on the battlefield you'll notice that they actually take up two slots and the artwork kind of matches and, and makes a little panorama you're going to have to defeat that outsider to win the game so not only do you have to get through all three gates, you have to then defeat the outsider by you know, playing allies and towers and things like that, trying to potentially do damage to the outsider. If you manage to survive all three gates and destroy the outsider, then you win. But you've got to be careful that your castle doesn't get destroyed. It can only take 20 damage. So focusing on killing minions is great to pre prevent the pillage. But if too much damage gets through, your castle is going to be destroyed pretty easily. So you really do need to try to defend as best as possible uh, to make sure that your castle doesn't take any damage. Trying to figure out how to mitigate that damage while also moving forward with your objective is kind of the key through line for the entire game. If you leave too many minions alive, you're going to be burning through this deck too quickly. If you always use your allies to defeat the monsters, you're never going to make it through the gate card. You have to actually have a free shot to deal empty damage, to actually deal damage to the gate card. But if you leave too many monsters open, they're going to destroy your castle. So lots of decisions to make every single turn. This is really a tactical game. I mean, you're going to see that, the tactical decisions that you have to make at every step of the way. But I think that the real fun that people are going to have here is in building their own constructed decks and bringing them into the game, cooperating with your friends, playing uh, that two-player version where you're each bringing in a deck and kind of seeing what kind of fun things you can do together to hold off the hordes I think is, is going to be a lot of fun. So that is Sky Tier Horde. Thank you so much for taking a look at the game with me today. I think it's going to have a really uh, big audience here. People that like CCGs, people that like tactical card games, people that like skirmish games, people that liked the original Sky Tier. I think there's a little bit of uh, this game for everybody. So definitely take a look at their Kickstarter page to see 
what all the funnel components are going to look like. And please continue to let me know in the comments below what you're most excited about, which factions you'd love to see make an appearance here in Sky Tier Horde. Thank you so much for watching. And until I see you next time, keep having fun at the table. Congratulations, you got to the end of one of our videos. Now, if you want more practice, just click on the video over here. It's another video. You might not have seen it yet, so click on it. If you don't want to do that, at least click on the subscription button below. That always helps us. And if you want notifications, please ring that bell.